Hi, I'm Luciano, and welcome to the Adventures of Lollywood Man. In today's video, I'm going to talk about cameras and I think everything that you need to know about working with them. This video has been inspired by a few questions I've seen, like between Twitter and LinkedIn and some friends that are working in layout and uh, lots of newcomers to Blender lately and lots of them struggling because the cameras are not handled just the same as in Maya, for instance. And so I'm going to teach you everything I think it's important to know. So yeah, without further ado, get liking and subscribing, obviously, and let's get into the video. So here we are, we have an empty scene, basic default scene, just to get started on this. And this is a camera object. How do you create a camera? Like with every object, you just go to uh, the add menu, camera, add camera, right? You can see that I have more options that you probably have right now. So this camera, basically it's the camera that you'll be using. And now to get in and out of the camera, you can use the, the tilde key or you can use the zero, right? Zero is a little bit more direct, but the fact that it's in a menu with all of the easy to do things, like for me, it works much better. I want to have all of like things categorized in a way, right? So camera, no camera, view, you know. So this one is an easy way to get in and out of the camera, right? And important thing that to understand is that there's many ways to move the camera. So you can move the camera like any object by pressing G or using the stupid widgets. Mostly if you're coming from another software, you kind of go like, oh, this kind of works, but not really. But more importantly, is that you will probably want to move your camera from the inside. And this is going to feel very backwards. In Maya, you lock your camera when you, when you don't want it to move. And here, you unlock it when you don't want it to move, right? Because whatever you do, you will not move the camera unless you actively press G, R, S, or, you know, the widgets, right? But in Blender, basically, you lock it because you're locking the camera to the view. As you can see, when I press this little lock, this option turns on, which is lock camera to view, which means that now when I move my view, then the camera would move with it, right? And now this has an advantage, which is you move and the camera moves, right? It has a disadvantage. That means whenever you move, you might fuck up your camera. So that's why normally what you want to do is lock the camera to the view and then unlock the camera and then the camera stays and you don't screw it up. An important thing about this is that when you have the camera locked, obviously it, you, this is what will happen, but you, you can unlock it. And then what is known in Maya as 2D pan and zoom basically just works like regular other movements of the camera, like control middle click, you can zoom in, shift middle click, you can pan it around. So if you want to like, say you have a little object there, you want to get really close, control, shift, control, shift, control, shift, control, shift with middle click, obviously, and there you go, right? And now if you want to go back like to the framing, original framing, you press like home, and then you can see it's framed. Now, it's not a perfect framing. Uh, I think like they should make it so like you get at least a little bit of a, a margin, but at least gets you 80% of the way, like everything, right? Gets you 80% of the way, then you can readjust, but uh, it should give you like a little bit of a margin. Now, things that you want to consider in your camera, you can see like now it's deselected. Now I can just like drag my mouse over there and then click it and it's selected. It's selected in the outliner and then you get the camera properties. And then your camera properties, obviously you have all the standard camera properties like focal length, but for view, like for viewing and working uh, options, you're gonna go to viewport display. And so for instance, this is one that I use a lot of the times, which is a passepartout. Um, and sadly, you can't change the color of the passport too. It's always black, uh, or at least not in an easy way. You should probably have an option here, right? Maybe you have a theme option to change it, but um, well, that wouldn't make many sense um, because you want to be able to change that on a scene to scene basis. Um, then you also have your composition guides, which also aren't amazing because again, they're all black. So if your scene is has low contrast, like default blender, environment, then it's really hard to see them. Um, you don't have like a proportional grid either. So that's 
something that I would love them to add, then you can put the name of the camera there. That's fine. Uh, not super useful. But there's a couple of things that you want to see. We can turn on the limits, for instance. And here you have this little cross. And this is the focal point. Like you can see if I move this, the turn, look at the depth of field numbers. Even if the depth of field is off, doesn't matter because like I'm moving the focal point uh, and that's absolutely amazing, right? Super easy to see. Um, and then you have the mist, which is this little point there and that little point there that tells you the, the start and end of the mist. Now the start and end of the mist is controlled in the world options. You go to mist pass and then you get where the mist starts and ends, right? And basically the start will define the distance. And so the depth is the distance from that starting point. So normally you want to first say, okay, I want it to start here and I want it to end somewhere. Uh, cause uh, this one is relative to that one. It's not independent values, right? Then there is the, uh, limit, right? You can also turn it off. Um, and as far as I recall, this limit used to be like the clipping end, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. Clipping end. Cause this one is to my camera view that I'm using currently. And then this is the one for that camera that I have selected, right? So you get clipping start and clipping end. And so, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. I really love how cameras work in, in Blender in this way. The other thing, say you want to use depth of field. So now, um, like this was going to come very handy, right? So I need to just turn on depth of field. I could move easily to like the, one of the pre-render viewports that work with Eevee. But also in the solid mode, you can just turn on depth of field here, right? And you can see this one is already out of focus a little bit, right? Now, even more so than that, I can just go select this one here, select the camera again, obviously, and just like lower my f-stop, right? And yeah, something like that. It's probably enough. Uh, and so this little cross is indicating where that focal point is. Now, there's a couple of things here. I can move it from here, obviously, right? You can see how the other uh, objects are getting into, into focus. I'm just going to go through this one because I think the depth of field here is slightly bit more pretty. And then I can also focus on an object. So, for instance, I can pick that object and this will lock the depth of field to that object, meaning that whenever that object, wherever that object moves, right? this one, you can see that the depth of field is always trying to follow its center, right? So beware that that doesn't pick up exactly what you're looking for. Like, so you could do this and track somebody's eyes, right? But it's not going to be on the eye and on the pupil. It's going to be on the center point of that object. So it is handy, but not super handy, right? Uh, the other thing is like the moment you kill it, it goes back to where it was. And that's not really great because it could be super useful, like even like more useful if you could pick an object and then turn it off and it would stay there. But it's different data. I don't know. Now, the cool thing, though, is you can go to focus distance and press E as in, as in E, I don't know, E for E. And then you click on anything and then it will pick the distance from the camera to that object. And now it got it, right? So if I press focus distance E and then go here, look, you can see how it moved, right? And now this object is in focus. And the cool thing is not, it's not picking the object exactly, as far as I recall, it picks like the distance of the, the point that you touch from that object. So say like this, you want this area to be on, in focus, right? Then again, you select the camera, focus distance and put it there. And then that part is in focus, though that part isn't. Um, and so that is really absolutely handy. It's one of those like obscure, really cool options that Blender has. I really love it. Then you have your regular aperture, blades, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Camera sensor, we don't care. Safe areas, yeah, not super amazingly useful, let's be honest. Again, they're black, they're hard to see. You can't change the color. 
should be able to change the color of all of these things separately as well. Then you got your background images, which I have a whole video on that you should definitely take a look. It's gonna be here. Okay, so let's see about making cameras active. Because as you can see, this little uh, triangle there is telling you that the camera is active, right? So if I'm if I create a second camera, right? I just duplicated the one that I have, right? And say I want to do two shots. When I press Control B, it will create a marker with the camera selected. And so I can go here and select this camera and then go here and Control B again. And then it created another marker with this camera. And so what that does is it makes the camera that is selected attached to the marker and it becomes um, active. Uh, you can see that if I go into the scenes panel, that camera here will switch from camera one, camera zero, camera one, camera zero. And that's pretty handy. Like if you're doing like a scene with like multiple cameras, but you don't want to have multiple scenes, you want to have like everything in one shot, in one animation shot to say so, um, then this is really handy because like you could be doing one full animation and then just like put your cameras around and do the cuts very simply. I think this would be very useful for layout uh, where you handle like lots of things like in continuity. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. And then to just delete the markers, you need to be in this little area, like the gray, dark gray area with the marker selected and press X and then you can delete them. Easy. Cool. So now you know how to switch cameras as well, right? And to make a camera active. So this is an old scene that I had and I have it prepared right now. So you can see like the, the that's that's a shot. But let, let's say I want to edit this shot against itself to like make this last longer because I want to show it from multiple points of view, right? Um, what you normally would do, um, depending on, again, like how you're uh, approaching your shot, all right? You normally do this and then have another scene with like the, the angle from that different place. But what you can also do, and so uh, this is a weird way to set up a scene because instead of like moving the character, I move the environment. It's This allows me to put the camera there and not have to move it and still following the character. So that's kind of funny. Just do that. And so say I want to cut these two shots together, right? But like, it's a very short shot. It's 19 frames, right? So there's not. it's not like I have points where I can cut it. But if I go into my video sequencer, I can bring in my scene. My scene, this one, it's called Salto, right? So that's the scene, Salto. Just gonna bring scene Salto. Sorry, I can't bring the scene to the own scene. So I'm just gonna go here, new, and then I'm gonna call this edit for YouTube like this, right? So I'm gonna add the Salto scene here, right? And then for some reason, this project hasn't like, doesn't, doesn't matter. That's not the point of the video. So we got Salto here, right? But we wanna use both cameras. And so I can duplicate this scene and have it twice. And obviously this is what happens, but I can select the strip, press N and then go into the input, not into the input, in the camera and pick a different camera. So I can have camera main and do this. And then it's playing back the entire scene with different cameras. So that allows me to do like edits like that and then go back a couple of frames and then see the thing. So this makes it super fun to be able to edit stuff. Right, I can actually Go and then, for instance, say, let's do into there, copy that, right? Maybe duplicate it. Let's see how that works. Maybe it's like a frame or two. One. Actually, I think I'm like a frame short. If I do that, maybe it works. Actually, no, I'm maybe a frame too long. So we could do, for instance, something like this. Let's try this. Even so, like that. Let's extend our timeline a little bit more over there. Yeah, that cut is not great, but you get the idea, right? So now we're using the same shot and from different angles multiple times and just re-editing it. 
right? And then when I render, I just render this sequence and there you go, right? So this is amazing for like layout and stuff like that. So you could have like all of your little shots here separated in scenes and then use multiple uh, angles from each shot to kind of choose where you want to go. And yeah, I think that was the last one thing I wanted to teach you. You can override the cameras from another, from like an edit point. And, um, and that's actually super handy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if this was useful to you, if the cameras are clear, if there's something that you're missing that you don't know how to use still, and we can probably discuss it in, the, in another further video. I uh, really like working with cameras. I really like the process of like creating sequences and stuff like that. And I'd love to hear if you're doing something like that. Lately, I've seen a couple of like really cool action sequences online. I got to work with Pierre Week in one of his which was amazing. Like I learned a lot from him. He's a freaking rock star of an animator. Let me know in the comments below what you are doing with cameras. I got the idea of doing like a car chase and I've never done something like that. So that could be super fun and it would be a good exploration of camera work. Remember to like and subscribe because that means a lot to me. Like the knowledge that the, this information is being useful to you keeps me wanting to do more of these videos. So, ah, and eventually, We'll have some of these little mugs from a short film uh, in the in the store, but I don't know when, but they're nice.